We're going to examine Databricks history with SQL, based on research papers and company posts. First, we need to begin where most modern cluster computing technologies got their start, with Hadoop, which was open sourced in 2006 by cloning two Google technologies, a distributed file system for storage, and a programming model for compute. Hadoop enabled you to work with large data sets, but it was slow because MapReduce had to read and write to disk during each task. Spark was another programming model, but it didn't have its own storage component. It used Hadoop's file system, so it was only a compute engine. Spark was faster because it processed Hadoop data in memory. Hadoop required users to write complex MapReduce programs in Java, so Hive was open source to enable users to submit SQL queries to analyze data stored in Hadoop. Hive automatically translates SQL operations into MapReduce pipelines, which was useful, but also slow because of all the disk reads and writes. Shark was created as a faster alternative to Hive. Shark was spelled like Spark, but with the letter H, because Shark was called Hive on Spark. Since Shark ran in memory on Spark, it was faster than Hive. Of the authors who wrote the original Spark paper, two are Databricks founders and one is on Databricks board of directors. New stories about Databricks startup often featured shark fins, because three Databricks founders and a board member were also authors of the original Shark paper. So if we think of Hadoop as on-disk MapReduce and the Hadoop distributed file system plus Hive, when Databricks was founded, its stack was an in-memory MapReduce plus Hadoop's distributed file system and Shark. So Shark was Databricks' first SQL engine. A year after its founding, Databricks was still supporting Shark as its SQL solution. But then two months later, Databricks announced it was ending development of Shark and focusing its efforts on the new Spark SQL component that had its alpha release in Apache Spark's 1.0 version. Welcome Spark SQL. Shark was hard to maintain because it was built on the Hive code base. And while Spark SQL was a rewrite, it still used the Hive Metastore and sourced data from the Hadoop distributed file system. At this time, Databricks believed that a specialized runtime built for query processing, like the SQL engines that cloud database vendors were building, was unnecessary because Spark's general data processing engine could run queries just as well. This conviction would not last. A year later, Databricks had a project named Tungsten to improve Spark's performance. One of the techniques Tungsten employed to speed up SQL queries was called code generation. Five years later, Databricks built their own proprietary SQL engine. Because they learned that to get optimal query performance while running Spark on cloud servers and object storage, you need a specialized runtime like the cloud database vendors use. Databricks SQL engine was named Photon and was often called their Delta engine. If you compare the research paper for Databricks new SQL engine to the paper that Snowflake published six years earlier, you will see ways that Databricks imitated Snowflake's design. Here are a few comparisons from the papers. A Snowflake founder was the inventor of the vectorized execution model that Databricks used. Databricks abandoned Tungsten's code generation technique, which originated from the Volcano Research Project during the early 1990s. Databricks' use of columnar execution is similar to how Snowflake executes the same instruction on multiple column values at the same time. In the same month that Databricks introduced their new SQL engine, they also acquired Redash, an open-source browser-based query editor. Databricks used Redash to build a new workspace they called SQL Analytics. This was significant because Redash gave Databricks a new SQL editor 
with the same look and feel as Snowflake's browser-based editor. Here's Snowflake's SQL interface, and here's Databricks SQL interface. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. The next year, Databricks renamed SQL Analytics to Databricks SQL. If we look back at Databricks' relationship with Snowflake, it's similar to a romantic relationship that progressed from early attraction to eventual decline. Early on, Databricks was proud to announce a partnership with Snowflake. During the next year, Databricks was still touting their partnership with Snowflake, and Databricks was even a diamond partner at the Snowflake Summit Conference. Then the gloves came off. Less than three months after Databricks publicized their own custom query engine, Databricks wrote that Snowflake's custom query engine causes vendor lock-in, which is odd considering that almost every Databricks service is proprietary. The mudslinging continued the next year when Snowflake said Databricks lacked integrity and Databricks said real companies don't have data warehouses anymore. And finally, Databricks was highlighting tools that could help you migrate from Snowflake to Databricks. When companies begin massive growth phases, relationships that were once partnerships can easily turn into rivalries as they eat into each other's profits. Another example of this is Databricks' relationship with Cloudera. Before Databricks had a cloud platform, they made money by partnering with Hadoop vendors and supporting the vendors' Spark users. For example, this post stated that Databricks is fully committed to working with Cloudera to guarantee that its customers will have the best possible support. But during the launch of their Databricks cloud platform, Databricks declared that Spark clusters from Hadoop vendors were too difficult to set up and manage. This is when Databricks stopped being simply an open source company that supported Spark and started to add its own proprietary features. So eventually, this partnership soured. Databricks would go on to publicly declare their platform was better than Cloudera's Impala, and eventually advised companies to migrate from Cloudera to Databricks. And Cloudera is now saying that their iceberg-based platform is the only truly open lake house, and that folks that use Delta Lake will regret being locked into Databricks. Welp, as the old proverb goes, all is fair in love and war.